Good morning, YouTube. Today is Friday, May 24th. Current time is 5 a.m. Good morning, how are you? Today we're running out to Mount Joy to a facility of ours that we, uh, we have our ready-to-eat products processed. Slim Jims, hot dogs, that type of thing. So we'll get a little bit of this road footage here. Looks like it's going to be crap. I'm going to have to buy a camera. And uh, get some good shots of the back roads out there. Some pretty interesting places that I, I think you might find interesting. I'll show you a little bit of what we do and uh, what we're going to pick up. And maybe we'll even get a taste test in, depending on what's ready for me today. So I'll see you in a little bit. Mercedes diesel power, baby! Power! Yeehaw! <clears throat> Interesting road fact. We're coming up on a traffic circle here. And I hope these don't wash out what I want to show you. You'll see... Hopefully you'll see something up here that looks like a sidewalk. Somebody asked me once... Why would they put a sidewalk? See it right there on the inner part of the circle? They asked me, why would they put a sidewalk inside a circle? And who would walk into the circle only to walk around the sidewalk in a circle? It goes nowhere. Truth of that is, it's called a trailer skirt. Mostly used by tractor trailers. The idea is, if you're in that circle and somebody is pinching you in from the other side, see, because it was a two-lane circle, um, rather than put a curb there or just leave it in mud, you would drag your trailer tires up a curb and chew them up or you'd drag your tires through the mud possibly get stuck. So they put that skirt in so you can pass through easily. It is not a sidewalk. Although I have seen people in there walking around in circles. Not to say that it hasn't been done. <laughs> uh, definitely has, but that's what it is. Uh-oh, big cheese is calling. Gotta go. I hope that sky comes up on this video. It's beautiful, it's pastel. It starts off like a dark blue, fades up into a purple and a violet and a pink, and then it looks a little bit orange. Gorgeous. Coming up on Lancaster right now. Heading towards central Pennsylvania. Alright, some of these back roads here are pretty cool, but my phone, the camera's so good it wants to focus on my windshield rather than what's on the other side of it, so I apologize for this blurriness, hopefully I get it to clear up here, but I don't know. So right over there, uh, they don't have any flowers out today, and you can't see it anyway. Darn it! What is the deal? ain't gonna work. Come on, YouTube. Oh, that was an old grist mill. Can't see that. Mount Joy, Pennsylvania, farmland. This farm over here on the left is owned by a Mennonite family. They're constantly dressed up in, uh, what you call it, their, their regalia, or not uniforms, but, you know, the ladies wear the bonnets and the dresses, and the men generally wear pretty plain clothes, but they have modern equipment over there, pretty happening farm, they got some nice, uh, nice tractors, nice cars over there, this is it, this is the great farmland in central Pennsylvania, 
to remember how far away we are from Lancaster, but we're beyond Lancaster. We're out there. There's a bed and breakfast up here on the right. I don't remember what it's called. I know they got a lot of business though, a lot of tourists. See it coming up straight ahead. There's a huge fire pit out there. It's probably 12 or 15 feet in diameter. About 10 chairs sitting around it. Right over here. Green Acres Bed and Breakfast, that's what it's called. I think they do farm tours in the area. place up here on the right. It's another historic farm. I'm not sure of the story behind it, but beautiful old brick farmhouse. Uh-oh, who do we got coming up on me? Wide load? No, just some meatball. Who knows? Look at these fields, though. They go on forever. You should see it out here in the middle of the growing season. Everything's green. Everything's tall. Somebody was doing some donuts there, huh? You see those tire marks? Some redneck hillabilly. Now we're coming up on one of my favorite back roads. I think it's uh, Kinder or something. Kinderhook Road? Oh, Pinkerton Road and Kinderhook, that was the intersection. I don't know what Kinderhook means. I think Pinkerton is the name of one of the farmers back here. Kinderhook is a, is a German name. That's, Kinder is, uh, I think that's young family or family or something. I don't know what it is exactly. I should look that up and find out. Not like it matters, but I'm just curious. I know it's a German word or a Dutch word. There's a lot of Pennsylvania Dutch out this way. In case anybody's watching that doesn't know anything about Pennsylvania, this whole area is Pennsylvania Dutch. A lot of Amish, a lot of Mennonites. Another beautiful farm here on the right. Sometimes they have their pony out, tied up over here in this pen to hang out. I don't know, eat grass, whatever ponies do. Nice stuff. sausage, egg, and cheese in my muffin right now. I'm so hungry. Once I get on that highway, I don't want to stop. Ooh, they got nice little cows up here. I don't know if you can see them or not. They're not little, actually. They're, they're pretty big. Coming up on a bridge. It's a one lane stone bridge. And uh, the legend has it that a leprechaun lives in there, a poor leprechaun. One of the stones is a false false wall type of thing. It's, it's an actual door, it's hidden in there. Nobody really knows which one it is. I guess it's a real stone, too, so you can't really tell by feeling. But, uh, here it is. I'll pull up and get a good shot before I get over to this facility. But I guess he only comes out on St. Patrick's Day to collect tolls from the bridge. And if you see where we are back here, nobody travels these roads really anymore. So if you only come out once a year on St. Patty's Day to collect tolls on this little old stone bridge right here, that's exactly why he's a poor leprechaun. But that's no joke. Owned and occupied by a leprechaun. I want to show you something here before I drop this stuff off. Got about 250 pounds of meat here. These are going in to be processed to uh, into hot dogs and beef sticks or snack sticks, like Slim Jim type of things, and I think maybe some jerky. This is all uh, trim from steaks and chops and fat. It's all meat. There is absolutely zero lips and buttholes in there. So I don't know 
what these people are eating or what they're buying. Whoever says that hot dogs are made with lips and buttholes. But uh, if somebody like that ever gives you anything to try, don't take it. I mean, <laughs> do the math. So this is my favorite part of the job. Sit here and wait. Wait for somebody to come and uh, take my meat <laughs> and hook me up with the order that I'm supposed to be picking up today. Um, get that taste test in too. I know the boss doesn't like this, so hopefully he ain't watching. So if you're watching, sorry, bub. It is what it is, man. I don't know what to tell you. This is what I do when I get here. I sit and I wait for them. This is on their terms. Uh, but seriously, about lips and buttholes? Who would do that? Where did that rumor come from? You know somebody must have done it. I know if I was making hot dogs, lips and buttholes would definitely not be on the list of ingredients, for sure. I know they're not here either. We, we don't do that. Um, we don't do Scrapple. I guess I've seen Scrapple made a couple different ways. Um, heads do get put into the Scrapple kettle and boiled down, so I guess you could say there might be lips in Scrapple. But if I was, like again, if I was doing it, I would skin the head. There's no way that I would want uh, the skin in my Scrapple. Skin's only good one way. That's uh, pork rinds or chicharrones. I think that's what they call them in, uh, in Mexico or Spanish communities. I'm not sure. But they're good that way. Definitely not going to my scrapple, though, that's for sure. So, yeah, lips and buttholes. It's a myth. It's false. Total baloney. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, they're funneling in now. It looks like somebody's coming over to get my stuff out of the van here, so I'll catch you later. Peace. Where are you going, chicken? You think he'll come over? Later. So there we are. Mild beef stick. We do these with no nitrates if you want them. I think we can do them with no MSG. But that looks like a Slim Jim, so you get the idea of what it is, right? These are good. If you think Slim Jims are good, these are better. These are like uh, the gourmet of the Slim Jim world. Got to gnarl off the package, you know? Mmm. Meaty. No lips or buttholes. Moo. Moo. Tasty little buggers. This place right here is an old grist mill. Beautiful old stone house. Tried to catch that on the way down, but if you see that freaking peacock right there in front of that wheel, see all these wheels? How they have the grooves in the side? So the idea was the grain, whether it was wheat or corn, falls into those heavy grooves and, uh, those wheels were powered by that stream down there you know they spun around in circles obviously together and uh, and then it would grind up the grain and then fall out of the little grooves as flour so that was the grist mill pretty cool you don't see a whole lot of those I mean you probably do but you probably don't even realize the grist mill at least that one had the cool old stones hanging out there so all right gotta go so now I'm in Bloomsbury, New Jersey, dropping off labels and picking up goat meat. Goat meat, what they're going to use it for, your guess is as good as mine. I will tell you, it is goat lips and buttholes, so maybe goat hot for that dude who claims there's lips and buttholes in, uh, in weenies.
No, I'm just kidding. It's goat meat. I don't know what's going on, but uh, Bloomsbury, New Jersey. And this road is closed, so I had to take a detour. I'm going to show you these, cur these curves in the road and this grade. It's insane. I'm so glad we have this new truck instead of the old box truck that I used to have. I probably wouldn't have made it. Hairpin turns. Check these out. Ah, they might be up a little bit farther. You really can't tell on the video, but this is a pretty steep downgrade. I'd hate to be this truck behind me. There's a... I don't know how big his trailer is. It's a shorter trailer, but he's a tractor and trailer. I wouldn't want to try to make these turns with one of those things. I mean, that one was pretty tight. He's going to barely sneak through there. Ah, he made it. He's going to have fun up here at these next two, though. Pocono Produce. I wonder what they're doing back here. Here comes a good one. Let's see if I can get my engine brake to kick on. It's not a Jake brake, but it sounds pretty cool. It's like a U-turn right here. Ooh! Need a mount. coming around in this mirror. There he is. Yeah. Let's see if he makes it. Look at them skills. Skills, brother. All right, I gotta drive. Later. So that'll be it for today's video. <clears throat> Finish it off with this nice scenic drive up North 611. It's beautiful out here. Delaware River off there to my right. Have a great Friday, everybody. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend and make sure you take a moment to actually celebrate the holiday as opposed to the party itself. It's a pretty important one. It means a lot to a lot of people. Stay safe. Don't do anything stupid.